everybody, in this video, I will present you the principle of event-based programming. What is an event? It's a basis of event-based programming and it's thus a basis for reactive application. You may know interruptions. Interruption is a mechanism that provokes the rerouting of your program to an address. Basically, you have what we call interruptions that are uh, the result of uh, external hardware mechanisms and you also have traps that are related to the execution of the current application. For example, when you try to divide something by zero, usually the division instruction generates what we call a trap. So there is a, a subtle difference between the two. Okay? And everything is handled by hardware. Exception is at a higher level because it's also a mechanism that provokes the rerouting of the execution of a program to what we call a handler. The handler is not only, okay, basically it's represented by an address, but not only represented by this address. It's a higher level of abstraction compared to interruption because, at least, since it's managed on the software way, you can stack several exceptions while it's usually more difficult at the hardware level for interruptions. Usually, it's mostly handled by the operating system or via operating system mechanisms and you have to know that unique signals are a variant of exceptions. The difference between the various types of exceptions is the way the handler is specified. The way you will set that if the event occurs, you will go there. But you have these handlers and then you have a way to specify uh, these rerouting mechanisms. A typical example are graphical interface and this from the very beginning, from the 70s, when X, the origin of uh, X11, that is now the uh, standard uh, graphic user interface on uh, Unix uh, was uh, created by Xerox. So now we can come to the notion of callback. So when you receive a callback, it means that you have to execute some code based on some event. So how do you set what a callback is? It's a way to treat an event. You have a first primitive for example, enable event, uh, that associate a handler procedure to an event. And of course, you may want to activate a given procedure for an event, but you may want to deactivate this procedure because at a given point of your application, you don't need to trap the event the same way, but differently, or you don't care anymore about the event. And then, sometimes, you have no computation to do, you have nothing to do and so you would like to give back the programming counter to uh, the operating system and say okay I have nothing to do. You can use the CPU to execute something else. I have nothing to do until some of the event I have uh, associated an handler to occurs and then I execute the corresponding piece of code. So it means that if you create a program based on callbacks, you will have a first part of the program that is executed when you launch the application, where you associate handlers to events. Then you say, I let the operating system do what he wants with the CPU by activating this primitive wet event. And then when the events I have trapped occurs, then I associate the associated handler. Okay. And this is really important because it allows you to enable a very efficient use of the CPU. Remind that we are in the situation of embedded systems where you have limitations in terms of CPU, in terms of memory, in terms of energy. And of course, the question raised, what do we do for unassociated events? You just ignore them. They are lost. You can imagine that at a given stage, you want a tap to be considered. Okay, so you want to trap it to do some action. But once you are processing this event, you may just want to disable the tap. 
and so you, you don't want the tap to change anything. So you deassociate, you disable the association between the tap and the corresponding procedure. So this is the no basic notion of callback. And it's very important because all these mobile device programming will be based on callbacks. So as a conclusion, smartphones and tablets, as I already mentioned in a previous video, are user interface centered. So it's reactive programming based on callbacks. As for most user interfaces, it's event programming because the callbacks are associated to events. Okay, here I mentioned the events associated to uh, user interface, but you can imagine that network will generate events, that uh, uh, other uh, peripheral of the device will generate uh, events and then callbacks. So it's a general principle. You have to remember that events are delicate because it's a concurrency like mechanisms because you have to be cautious because events are delicate uh, they generate concurrency like problems concurrency when you have several paths of code executing simultaneously but it's more or less the case because you can have an event that generates the execution of a handler and when you execute the handler you may have another event that generates the execution of another handler okay so some other times the second event may have a higher priority than the first one, and so you will interrupt the first handler. So it's important because when you have shared resources, okay, a variable that can be manipulated by both handlers, you have to be careful on the way uh, you use it. Okay. And uh, you, for example, in what we call an event loop, you may have such mechanisms uh, to be considered. And you will see that the languages we are using in the language we use for uh, mobile device programming like Objective-C, Swift or Java embed uh, event mechanisms but moreover all the framework you are accessing via this language are totally based on this notion of callbacks so you really must understand it. In the next two videos we will just give you two typical examples that are totally decorrelated with any language just to let you understand the principle of these mechanisms and of course you will have numerous occasions to practice with uh, mobile device programming uh, in uh, the remainder of this course. Thank you very much for your attention. See you later!